we have played so far though have been won by Ballistics as well when they faced against Dignitas often the first time. So Sky Temple is going to come in as our next map, which is one of the maps that Dignitas was able to take against Ballistics. Yeah, in that series Dignitas opened up with an Abathur first ban, Ballistics removed Genji and Dignitas set themselves up for Tassadar. They went with Tassadar first, answered by the Tyrion Ballistics and then Tracer came out. So Dignitas was able to get the Tassadar Tracer which is a secret weapon, not so secret, but it's a weapon yeah. that they have not yet been able to employ. Now one of the interesting parts is that if you face an opponent again that you just recently were matched up against in the tournament, of course you very closely look at the drafts that have been played in the previous series. But so far both teams have deviated quite a bit and especially Dignitas showed in the series against Fnatic already that they are willing to change their draft patterns completely. Especially the insanely high priority that they currently have on Arthurs has showcased that since when they were facing off against Ballistics they didn't use Arthurs at all, not in one of the five games. Right now, they've been playing him for five games in a row. And yeah. against Ballistics, it just doesn't seem to have the same effect that it had against then against uh, Fnatic. So it's six games now, right? Since they did Arthas twice in a row. It was like four before they started. No, no it was three in a row, but in... Uh, the oh, right, yeah, right. Yeah. So this is the, it was the fifth game, but the last four times they played it before this series, they had a 100% win ratio on it. So Ballistics now has a number of options. They can go Tassadar Tracer. They can get the Tyrael that they favor so much and which is great for boss control or they can go in a different route. Dignitas had the option to set the draft up in a similar fashion as before, going Tassadar early, threatening Tassadar Tracer, but decide to go with the Lucio instead. And Ballistics, the Haka Tyrael. Worked so well for them last game and if Ballistics ends up winning this game, Dignitas may look back at that Tyrael and say, you know what, KSV probably had a pretty good idea with that. Tassadar ah, and there we Tracer go. immediately. Last time Dignitas played it and they do it again. Right now the draft is insanely similar to the last draft that they played. So the Haka Tyrael and let's see if this time they can pull it off. Dignitas is putting all their hopes on uh, Poik's shoulders at this point. Yeah and uh, as you know we're not 100% convinced yet of the Genji for Poik last game. We haven't seen him as much on it but his Tracer has been proven to be very formidable so far in this tournament. And of course, Dignitas is 0-2. Nerves, emotions can come into play. The loser will be third place, winning $50,000 of prize money, whereas the winner will get minimum of $70,000 and challenge KSV in the grand final, where undoubtedly we'll have a full audience again, just like we had yesterday during the second match here in Beijing in the National Aquatic Center. I love that Ballistics is currently hovering at least the Arthur span. Even if they don't commit to it, you see that they are heavily considering adapting to what they've seen in the last two games here. So they've won both, but they still say, yeah, the impact of Arthur's is a little bit too much. Let's make sure that we are banning him out here. Dignitas seems to highly favor the hero lately. So let's try to take a comfort pick away from them. We have Vala banned out by Dignitas. And from Ballistic side, it actually you see also shows a lot of confidence. They know that Tassadar Tracer is a go-to for the Dignitas here, that it is a weapon in the arsenal, and they still did not target it in the slide, as they said from the get-go. We're going to be able to deal with it this time. If you want to take it, that's fine. We feel like we have the answer. Yeah, and I, I want to see what that answer is. And yeah. I want everyone who hates facing Tassadar Tracer, as it's such a powerful combo, to pay special attention to whatever the next two picks are going to be because they are the ones that are going to be most reactive to Tassadar Tracer in particular. Ballistics has a heavy frontline setup. Tyrael, the Haka, very mobile. Shields, survivability. And how do they envision countering Tassadar Tracer? And also, which hero are they going to put SC on again? That's, of course, also another big, big question mark at this point. And Dignitas has been outbanning SCSC. Genji and Bala, yeah. two of his most prominent heroes. He still has a few heroes left that he has already played. We could also see once again Greyman being picked up here, who does do uh, very well against Tracer. And Greyman and Karazim are both being picked, and both of those heroes do well against Tracer. Karazim, similar to what a thought post of Genji can be, can tra uh, just uh, trace her down. Oh. Uh, <laughs> chase her down when uh, she's trying to escape. The quick rewind here, so that's always an option. The uh, solo target damage is considerable against her. And Greymane's auto attacks also do a fair amount of damage here. So both heroes will try and hunt her down whenever possible. And they're very mobile. They have a decent yeah. probability of dodging pulse rounds if they use their mobility at the same time. 
they can also, like you said, follow her and then yeah, good damage. Earth Ally from Karazim blocks much of her damage and Divine Palm can stop a pulse run from c finding a kill. It's very easy to hit. It's the exact same draft so far that Ballistics played against Dignitas the last time they faced off. So the only hero that misses in this equation is still last time they picked Liming on the last on slot. On the fifth slot. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so you want to take mobility against Tracer. This is uh, seeming to be the answer of Ballistics. Dignitas, what will they take as a frontliner? It's going to be Anubarak and Sonia. It's for Dignitas also a very similar draft. Last time they picked ETC over Anubarak, since ETC was banned early. They substitute him too. But all the heroes that they had access to, they picked again. We have Sonia, we have Tracer, we have Tacita here. In uh, terms of the double support, we saw them with Rega over Lucio. But the core heroes of the composition are still very much the same. You have Sonya on the off lane, you have your main damage combo with Task Tracer, a substitute on the main warrior and a bit of a change in the support. And let's see if Ballistics once again commits to Li Ming. I mean, I mean it would work out. Li Ming with Disintegrate exceedingly easily pops out a Cocoon target if Anubra goes with Cocoon. She has mobility to dodge Tracer shots. Would work out fairly well. There are <laughs> other options, of course, but <laughs> it's just interesting that it, it's like a full rematch. The wheel of time. Everything yeah. that has, has happened will happen again. Uh, don't remind me of that series. That those books were awful. <laughs> <laughs> Very controversial opinion, as I found out when I voiced that publicly. Yeah. But yeah, there and she it's is. Limming. It's Liming. Okay. Now, of course, Anubrak has a choice to go with the uh, Locust Swarm in order to circumvent the cocoon versus disintegrate problem but you may still go cocoon put it out on Li Ming and then prevent some of those resets it's all possible but we have the stage set for our third match in this series we have ballistics leading 2-0 on the verge of making it to the grand finals and dignitas fighting for survival they have to win three in a row in order to make their way back and make it to the Grand Finals. And as Ballistics uses the same draft here, it's of course also important to note that Dignitas was not afraid of it. They had chances to ban some of the core heroes for the draft out, but they were more so worried about what SC could bring to the table with Genji and Vala and try to target him specifically. So they said from the get-go, we know what you played in the past. If you want to play it again, go ahead. We're going to beat you once more. And their confidence on the side of Ballistics just says, well, we prepared for you. This is their go-to counter to this kind of draft. <coughs> Excuse me. Will it work for the Ballistics this time? I mean, this is sticking as a tournament life on the line here. If they lose now, then they are out and we will have the All-Korean Grand Final. So Dignitas, they have to make it happen right now. They had a rough ride so far in the series. Definitely not going the way that they were hoping for. At this point, we have Wubi once again on the Sonya. And of course, Poik on Tracer. His first game in the tournament was on Tracer. And as he stated after the series, he was extremely nervous, missing one ult after another, creating the nervous Poik meme right there. But overall, he has improved so much in the tournament. It's actually really impressive, considering that he just joined the team. And that it's also his first offline tournament on uh, that stage. Sky Temple as a battleground to potentially decide this series is a very unforgiving battleground. Having one early death in this, on, on this battleground means that the opponent will be level 4 when you are not. That means you'll miss out on crucial temple shots, that means the map gets open up on your side. That makes it more hazardous for you to solo lane there, you can get ganked. And the, this objective is so strong, objectively strong, uh, compared to other battlegrounds, that if you fall behind, you could lose out on the boss in a level 9 versus 10 situation. You lose out on the temples and you will start losing keeps simply to objective pressure. More so than on almost any other battleground. Now, STE is going to get his chance to make some plays here with Li Ming. We have SC as expected on Greymane, Jong Ha on the Haka, of course. Hooligan once more with Tyriel and Magi with Karazim, which allows him a bit more aggression towards Tracer in particular. Snitch. Flex in this series so far has been on Abathur, has been on others. Now on Tassadar, JPL on Anubarak will be on Sonia. Poik on Tracer and Zelia once again on Lucio. The stage is set. It could be the last map of the best of five series here as we are heading into Sky Temple. Dignitas is down. They lost Infernal Shrines. They lost on Dragonshire. Can they turn it around? <laughs> they always find something new. <laughs> I'm actually really impressed. Shining, shimmering, splendid.
I've never seen that guy before. <laughs> it's Aladdin. I mean, in case that you didn't know, Sky Temple is actually connected to Tomb of the Spider Queen. I did not know that. Really? Where's the tomb? Uh, it just like it drops down into into tomb. So if y Harrison Jones comes from Sky Temple, there's like some thingy that you can click, and then you see him like crawling around there. Ah. Well, Five, there you go. Nexus four, lore. Three, two, and here we go. One. How are the teams going to land? Who's going to go for the vision? We see Ballistics in a very defensive setup, spreading out rather than doing either a rush for vision or for a tower. Right, at this point, very passive play on the side of Ballistics. Just having Liming all the way up at the top, but maybe expecting a bit of an early aggression here from Dignitas. Oftentimes you see players move out onto the lanes as five and try to get at least half the HP of one of the towers. Especially with this map heavily favoring a team that has a structural advantage. It can be a nice move in the early game. Pulse round stacks coming up about 60% of the way there. Boyk looking to get that uh, bomb. The only hero who has the Quote unquote level 10 ability at uh, level 1 already, is Tracer. We also have, of course, now with Snitch on Tracer, one uh, player that is going to try and uh, babysit Poik as much as he possibly can throughout the game, always making sure that he gets the shield. A big power spike is going to hit on level 4 when the increased lifesteal, thanks to Tacitus level 4, is going to help Poik to be a little bit more aggressive in those fights. We'll be chilling out there in the bottom lane on Sonia, getting pushed by both Greymane and Karazin. In comes Tassadar to help a little bit. Yeah, and interesting enough, we have no Dehaka down at the bot lane. Normally in the early phase, you would expect the global hero to be at the bottom of the map so that he can make the rotation into mid and top once that the temples are being fought over. But it's currently a little bit different. They keep Dehaka at the top, will allow him to eventually move down to the bot lane. But with Dignitas keeping Sonya out of vision until the two minion waves collide, Dignitas is now likely to get a bit more experience. Dignitas uh, choosing the middle temple, actually getting pushed out, giving momentary double laser channels by Ballistics as SESC grabs bottom XP. Nice little win for Ballistics. They have full control of the top and took a little bit here from the middle. Yeah, Poi committing his uh, bomb here, but we have Turel moving out. Not really getting too much damage, so at this point it's definitely an exchange in shots, but we still have the full control of Ballistics at the top, whereas they were also able to sneak a few of the shots away from the mid lane. Greymane rotated back down to make sure that they don't lose out on any of the minions at the bottom lane either, so well done by Ballistics. Walking away with a tiny lead, nothing too crazy here, but already focusing on early camp. Snitch trying to sniff that out. And he has this time no invasion yet by Dignitas. Uh, rotations for Ballistics have been quicker and more efficient so far. Doing more laning during the temples, grabbing a few extra lasers and also grabbing their camp faster. There's a little bit of a time winning out the bot lane. There's actually three heroes already committing to a bot lane positioning. The Hakai still is his position up at the top and that's where you would expect him to stay until the second temple phase opens up. It's one of the big advantages of running a global hero here. And Boyk is just throwing out his bomb whenever he can, making sure that he gets the extra damage in. A little bit more tricky for Margie to actually heal the targets up here. First camp is defeated. So now Dignitas has the push advantage at the bot lane. Drag at the top doesn't connect on Wubi. And Dignitas getting a small little lead. Taking their yeah. own siege camp slower allowed them to clear siege giants first. Now push with it. They get about the same amount of damage on the tower. Trying to go for the play here with the burrow charge into impale, but Ballistics is safe. Yeah, Magi is able to move out. Stun didn't hit SC on Grey main, so there was no threat against him. Dignitas now with the early camp. There's a lot of uh, things that you can do with the timing around the uh, night camp, especially if you are able to take it a little bit later and just time it to uh, so it moves out onto the lane when your opponent's night camp hits your towers. It oftentimes helps you to get a more effective push going for yourself. So we'll be already committing to the clear at the top. Magi dodging the old on Tracer's end. But the entire tower front is already taken out. So Dignitas is getting solid value against the structures. And more importantly, they're opening up the bottom uh, forts to expose the fountain itself. And once you can take that down, makes it way more difficult for your opponent to fight over the second temple phase. Tracer playing with fire there. Low HP, waiting for the next shield. And able to get skill shot by either Tyrion or Liming. In comes JPL, but the timing mismatch. Tracer was low, Tassar already used dimensional shift and was going away, so no real threat there. But Dictus is doing a good job. They've opened the bottom wall entirely and are now starting to take the temple. 
Here's the perfect scenario for what I said earlier with the two camps. So now the towers are helping out with the ammunition that was remaining to clear the camp out. And then it's going to be a heavy push at the top lane for Ballistics thanks to the timing that they had on the night camp. So Sonya is starting to rotate down. And we see Grey main follow at this point, which means that the night camp can freely push. And now Ballistics is moving to the bot lane. Jong Ha has already made the transition and is starting to take control here. Trying to go for JPL. Half the shots already taken. Jack connects. He's getting a bit low, but he should still be able to easily move out here. And Wubi actually was middle and goes top again, defending the fort, keeping it alive. And this means that Dignitas will give up the rest of the shots. Ballistics steal about 55% of the temple shots if they are able to completely finish this. And Dignitas is okay with that, because had they continued to contest, Wubi would have had to come down, and Dignitas would give up their top fort for free. As low as it is, they would also give up much experience. This would give Ballistics level 10, when Dignitas is level 9.2, and that would give Ballistics a chance to get the boss. This seems to be the better play for Dig, and they hold on to their experience lead. And right now with the waves pushing in, uh, that lead should actually start shrinking pretty soon. But Ballistics is missing out on a few of the minions up at the top. Wubi has been pushing that in pretty heavily, as both of the waves are taken that should allow Ballistics to get level 10. The problem is that that small window that we see is used by Dignitas right away to go back to the bot lane and drop the fort. And that's mainly important because of that structural advantage that we've been highlighting. So now we have the level 10s in play, Kuhn chosen on the side of Anubarak. We're going to see a lot of plays around that, especially to allow Tracer to get a kill. Yeah, we can also uh, look at Liming's choice, probably disintegrate. There we go, to pop out Cocoon. Pulse round misses. Would have been a potential kill, or a forced Divine Palm at least. Yeah. The drag to oh. Celia! Perfect drag, Celia low, but he gets the sound barrier off just as SC goes in. And a defensive cocoon is being used right away by JPL, trying to make sure that no one on his team dies. They move back behind the wall and make sure that they get the reset here, tapping at the fountain. They still have a bit of pressure at the bot lane, thanks to the Siege Giant camp. All in all, Dignitas is doing well, but you can really tell that if they are not careful, there are snap moves on Ballistic side that can immediately put pressure onto them. Furthermore, Jongaha on the Haka has pretty much missed a lot of isolation so far in the entire series. And as much as that's a reason for concern for Ballistics. Once he does start hitting it, that could be a big threat towards Dignitas. They will need to continue to be careful of that. They've dodged it well so far. Now with a five-man push in the middle. Poik taking damage, getting the shield, leeching le back up again. Magi is always with him here, always moving in, moving out, making sure that he has his dashes available to escape. But they're putting the pressure on the Tracer wherever they can. SC at the side here, Spear misses, he's in trouble, he's way too far out, might need the palm and he gets it. Just as the bomb explodes and he's kept alive here. Good move by Magi. Good move by Poik as well, hitting the pulse round, forcing the palm. It was effective, but that's a cooldown that will not be back as fast as Tracer's pulse round in particular. And now we have a double tempo phase again. It's very even so far. Structurally, Dignitas is a little bit ahead, and usually that matters more on Sky Temple than almost any other map, since the Temple shots will start to go to increasingly relevant shots, and Dignitas is getting a bit of double laser action. As we see the two Temples now being fought over, or at least taken, there's one thing to also point out that we haven't really touched upon too much yet. A lot of this can come down to a fight over the boss, and that's where especially Sanctification on Tyrael's side and also Holy Ground is going to play a huge role later on. So the boss control for Ballistics is really strong, which means that Dignitas has to be very careful later on when those start to play a much more important role in the game. Yeah, Cocoon will be a big role in trying to lock down Tyrael, so he yep. cannot use those two impactful abilities. But there's also isolation on the Nubrak to prevent that, disintegrate to pop open the cocoon, the Haka can burrow to buy more time, so there's definitely a lot of tools on either side. But it looks like Ballistics, like you said, has the favorable boss fight. And it means that Dignitas will need to stay ahead in both laning and temples in order to win this game. Boss is a threatening affair for them. We haven't seen a single kill in the game yet. This is the third map here. And for Dignitas, this is the most important one. They need to win this one to start the comeback. They have the level advantage. They are a little bit ahead here by half an experience level. And we see 13 on both sides now. So new talents kicking in. And immediately nullification also on Tassadar's sides, trying to make sure that Greyman in particular is not going to be able to instantly blow up Tracer and chase her down. Of course, nullification ray can be nullified by sanctification. And so, big burden on the shoulders of Hooligan here, big responsibility in order to keep playing Tyrael as well as he has. Pass around on Tyrael. 
Once again, Tracer being targeted here. Poig is just like dashing around the entire time. Zhong Ha moves in, was trying to hit a drag here, not even committing to it since everyone was outside of the range already. But Dignitas has fallen back once again, with the exception of, of course, Whoopi, who is still up at the top lane, always splitting away from the team. But this allows Ballistics to move through the wall and taking down a few more important structures here. And they needed to do that. Dharka's Brush Stalker is a one minute cooldown. Anytime you bring him in and you do not get a kill, you must at least get structural damage. Otherwise, you have wasted an important cooldown and you lose out on potential map pressure. So whenever Dignitas can threaten a fight, force the Dharka's Burrow, that is a win for them, even if nothing else happens. And they use that time to deep push top and to deep push bottom as well. Yeah, Sonya was playing this a little bit safe, just in case that not only the Haka, but someone else would move to the top lane with him and try and go for a gank here. So we'll be with a safe positioning on the map. Allows right now the Haka to uh, push the lane at the top out, but now Wubi is moving in again. And the rest of the team is taking position around the mid lane. Vision currently in control by Dignitas. They take that watchtower back. Ballistics jealously guards it and want to take it back. Celia. Essie is splitting as the only hero down to the top bot lane. He needs to be a bit careful there. Dignitas is starting Cocoon. a rotation. Cocoon just to keep him in place. The Haka moves in. Is trying to delay it a little bit. Isolation Goes for hits. the isolation. There's no stun follow-up. That's the question. Is Jonga going to get out of here? Goes for everything he has. Palm is hitting SC, but it's not getting triggered. And Dignitas could still try to go for the kill. And indeed they do. They get it. They SC. get the kill against SC. He's down. And now they are getting the second one as well. Starting to chase down Ballistics. Double kill for Dignitas. Fantastic job by JPL, locking down Greymane there by himself with Cocoon. Really cool counterplay by Jonga, hitting the isolation, preventing the double stun follow-up. But all hell would break loose as Archon gets turned on. They go for Greymane, Divine Palm comes out too soon, truly. Pulse Bomb did not proc it, and then they killed him in the aftermath. Great job by Dignitas. Sanctification not even able to be used to save either of those, as Dignitas with Lucio Zelia had the positive rotation. They were there faster, and they probably slowed down and dismounted Ballistics a little bit in the process. This is a very important move. It gave them the boss, they are going for the keep, and they're not even sending anyone to bottom temple yet. Wubi was thinking about it on Sonya, but they're gonna go for the keep, and then we'll, we'll see what else happens after that. Dignitas can either try to go for the core, or go back to the temple and use positive structural uh, game state. With the palm being used early, it was just absolutely perfect play by Dignitas to wait it out and realize that they should just back off for a second. 16 versus 16 in talents. The keep is gone at the bot lane, though, and the boss is moving through. Going straight for the core here. It's still only an 11 minute boss that we are seeing here, but Dignitas is looking for an opportunity to end the game already. They're super aggressive here. Cocoon is out once again. Magi under pressure. Palms himself once again, not getting procced here. The boss goes through the shield. 60%, 50%, 40 going down. Dignitas goes for the victory. Victory and they will take it, taking the first game of Ballistics in this best of five series, Dignitas with a potential start of a comeback.